Hello, welcome to the final part of the series. These are my watercolor brushes. This is a cheap camel hair brush I got a while back. I'm just going to lay down the big flat colors. Just so I'm not working on white water color paper surface. On the spacesuit, it's going to be, I think I wanted it a little dirtier, like a dirtier blue, green, brown mix. But I just wanted to lay down some colors. I usually use this kind of thing for uh, life painting. For illustration, I can't control it enough, but for something this big, yeah, go nuts. I think it's a U-Trick brush or something. Super cheap. Squirrel hair. Is it squirrel? I said camel. Whatever it is, it's a lesser animal. It's not a weasel. That's ultramarine. See on the side, that's another ink uh, or water brush, refillable. But that one, I just have water in there, no ink. This put down some little earth colors. I guess that's burnt sienna. A little bit more. So if watercolors, they dry lighter. So you always have to do a little compensating. You know it's going to dry, like with acrylics, acrylics dry darker and they dry flatter. With watercolors, it's a little bit lighter. Here's just darkening the skin tone. <clears throat> I like this brush. I don't use it for, you know, actual illustration. But for something like this where I'm too lazy, or if I want to paint outside, it's a good travel brush. I don't need to worry about carrying extra water. See while the while the uh, paper's still wet, you could do all this smooth mixing, which isn't always best. I don't really work this method, uh, work this uh, this style. I like waiting for it to dry a little. See, now it's dry. See how much lighter it got. Now I'm going to try to darken the suit. I don't have I don't have a color sketch of this. So I'm always uh, I'm always thinking where I'm taking it. It looks a little too metallic right now. So I want to scuff it up a little. Make it a little dirtier. I think the word is lived in. These are watercolor pencils. I just want to try it. The paper was uh, still a little bit damp, so you can't get the effects that I wanted to. See it's not it's not sticking on there too well. But I am not giving up. 
See, it activates when you put water on it. So it's a good combination. The uh, water brush and the watercolor pencils. Not great for big areas. For, for tiny spots, it's fine. Building up on the shadows. I like shadows with a lot of colors. See, as I'm putting on these uh, flesh tones and earth colors, it makes me want to put more in the background instead of, not the background, the suit. Because the suit looks so dull. You'll see it, I'll start putting some browns back there. A lot of building up. That bark color on the nose. I like how that turned out. So I continued it on the rest of the figure. Put some Payne's gray, uh, Prussian blue. It's a cooler blue. It's a it's kind of like a sci-fi water blue. Even though ultramarine is like Caribbean. Double speed. I wish I could paint this fast in real life. Introducing new colors. I think I dabbed a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson, carmine. Go back to the blue. I'm putting more and more Payne's gray and black. To separate the shapes. I don't want it to get too colorful. This started out as an homage to uh, Juan Jimenez. And I've seen him draw with, I think it's watercolor pencils and a paintbrush. And his stuff is insane. It's great. Trying to add more definition on the shapes. Because she looks kind of flat right now. That's pretty dark. That's my slack. Going back and forth between the face. The costume. Kind of like how that turned out. This is mostly paints gray because it pushes everything back. So this pretty much this entire painting is just two brushes. Two cheap brushes. The shadows being so red, I have to put some of that color into the into the suit. Here it is zoomed in. You see a better idea of the painting I like those brush strokes a lot of people don't and I understand it if you don't like those brush strokes in your paintings do it while everything is wet it smooths out or you could do some blending 
But for me, I like those cuts. It reminds me of Sergeant. Again, if you have thicker paper, better watercolor paper, you could just lift up the paint. I learned watercolors from a man named Erwin Greenberg, and he used to paint on Bristol, Bristol paper, like five ply. And you could lift up the paint. It's amazing. It's a great way of working. Very forgiving. This is me just playing with the shapes, seeing if I could put some designs on there. Just break it up instead of just like a bucket. I want to put some some design elements. Maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. You decide. Ultimate control, watercolor pencil. You could leave it dry and it works like a water, uh, like a color pencil. Because right now she looks kind of dirty. So I had to put more texture using the watercolor pencil. Just so it looks intentional. Sometimes when you screw up, you convince people that uh, it's your idea. That was your goal. As long as it looks good at the end, who cares? Maybe that's where she co <laughs> Maybe that's where she carries her lunch. I don't know. with bold colors like that red I I knew right away when I put it down on her nose it was too much so I'm trying to tone it down best way of doing that is just put some more everywhere else It'll dry lighter anyways. That's a bold move there. Wetting that uh, watercolor pencil. Look how dark it got. I'm trying to do some mental calculus in my head. How much brown do I need for the rest of the costume? To make it look a little more united. The answer is a lot. So you could be really rough with this brush. It doesn't really matter because it only costs like five dollars. Some of my other watercolor brushes, they're like fifty bucks. So I can't I can't be mushing them around. Probably a little bit too brown. But as long as I put more browns everywhere else, should be fine. I could probably splatter some paint on there just to give that area a little more texture. I 
Next time I do this, I'll do it in gouache. Show you the difference. Because when you do it in watercolor, the ink is the top layer. If you do it in gouache, the ink is the bottom layer. <laughs> in Photoshop speak. Here I am trying to blend in some of the flesh. I liked how that green look, the green um, on the shadows. So I decided to put a little bit more. Green everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, I hardly use that green ever. See how it lines? So once it dries, you go over it a little bit more. So you build up the layers. So what started out as a spacesuit, this could be anything. Maybe a sewage worker, I don't know. Maybe it's the man from the future. <laughs> the woman from the future. Was it from space? I won a costume contest. <laughs> the classic honeymooners episode. Jacques Delabrowski. Try to condemn the sewage, the sewers, France. It's just putting in some color to separate some shapes. Oh, this paper, it's cheap. I think it's like. Amazon Basics or something, paper. It's a couple of bucks. Just want to try it, test it out. I won't be buying any more. But for ink, it's fine. It's basic. Just punching up some colors. So the next video, if there's a next video, I might do some Photoshop cleanups. Can't promise I'll do that to this sketch, this doodle. But thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon. Here's my signature. Three dots. <laughs> Thanks for watching.